Well, it's not exactly a day for the beach, so I've settled for a children's sand pit because I want to talk about sand. Lovely stuff, sand. And we all know what wonderful building material it is, whether it's children's sand castles or those enormous concrete high-rise buildings that make our cities. But there are some more refined uses for sand that we don't so often think about. Take glass, for instance. Glass is basically sand or silica. Our windows are made of it. My glasses are made of it. My earrings are made of it. So our uses of sand range from the utilitarian to the purely decorative. But for some little animals, sand spells survival. This little bug lives in the leaf litter in sandy places. It feeds on ants and uses grains of sand stuck on its back as camouflage to fool its enemies. Here's a tiny moth caterpillar that makes a protective case out of silk and sand. It takes a close-up like this to show the precise placing of the sand grains. I think a predator would get a pretty gritty mouthful. Sand wasps make nurseries in the sand. This one's dug out a chamber to lay her eggs in. She's filling it with preserved insects, tiny leaf hoppers that her young ones will feed on when they hatch. The mother wasp seals the burrow every time she leaves. Ant lions use sand to make pit traps. The ant lion's buried at the bottom with only its wide open jaws showing. The sides of the trap are just steep enough for the slightest disturbance to start a landslide. And it's goodbye ant. But what about the beach itself? It's there you find the greatest dependence on sand. And the little animals that live there must gear their entire lives to the rise and fall of the tides. Let's have a look at one of them. There's a verse I remember from my childhood that goes like this. Little drops of water, little grains of sand, make a mighty ocean and a pleasant land. Well, we've seen some of the things that can be done with little grains of sand. We'll be having a look at little drops of water in another program.